Good morning and welcome to a new vlog. KK went on school friendship. I'm still getting dressed because I'm talking to you actually. Oh, and these are my pair of socks. I absolutely love this colour. I'll tell you why I'm putting those on in a sec. Coco's gone on the school French trip. We had to get up ridiculously early. The alarm went off at 4.50 this morning. And I dropped her to, um, to, to meet the coach. And then I came back and I was going to do jobs and stay awake, but I didn't. <laughs> I went back to bed fell into a deep sleep and woke up feeling ghastly. It's awful actually when you go back to bed. Um, sometimes you feel worse for it. Anyhow, Gus and I have got two days together. And one thing, and I think I mentioned this last week, Gus has shown this interest in going fishing. So I have booked for him to have a, a fly fishing casting lesson this morning and then a little fish. Um, locally in Arundel so I thought I would take you along with us and also take you into Arundel and have a little look at that so that's why so this shirt is um, well blouse really is from Toast and I bought it at the Country Brickant summer 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 fair um, from Saving Grandma's Garden I'll link it below because she had some really really lovely bits and I think she's going to be at Dalesford's at the end of September and this I forgot to share with you last week is slightly crumpled. It is Johnson's of Elgin and this was in the sale. Um, so that was a bit of a bargain. Great colour, I'm going neutral. Wearing my jeans and obviously my pair's socks. So I'm gonna go and put my wellies on, get Gussie, actually put the kettle, because everywhere I go, I take my cup, um, my cup with hot water and a little bit of ginger and lemon. And I find that really calming. I am still feeling sick. Um, I, I mean, I'm totally fine. Absolutely fine. I'm definitely not pregnant. Ever since Arch has, has gone, ever since we left him up there, I've just felt sick. And I think, I think it's natural. And I've been talking to lots of other people who um, say that they have felt the same and have been really sweet. But I'm going to chat to you more about that later because Gussie and I have got to go fishing now. So Steve is teaching Gussie how to set his leg up. And they're going to have a bit of casting practice. They've got a little bit of wool on the end of the line. There we start go. to learn how to cast without hooking too many right. things. So we are at Chalk Spring Fisheries, which is just outside Arundel, and you can book to have a lesson and or, or just come and fish here with Steve, who is there teaching Gussie. He's really, really kind and really patient, which, um, which is what we need with Gus. Gus is very enthusiastic, so that uh, that's always Always good start, isn't it? So whilst Gussie is having his casting practice, my beady little eyes caught an abundance of elderberries here. So I asked Steve if it, if it was okay if I had a forret. And you know, not those ones there, but down here, there are quite a few that I spotted. I was talking last week about the hedgerows being sort of bursting full of things that are packed full of lots and lots of things that are good for us. <laughs> Look at all of those there. Now, elderberry syrup is wonderful and I'm gonna show you how to make it later on. The leaves and the stems are toxic, so that is something to be mindful of. Don't be tempted to eat those. But I'm gonna pick these. I didn't have a basket in the car, but I had a plastic bag, and I keep a pair of scissors in the car for just in cases. And this is one of those just in cases. So I'm gonna pick some of these now. Steve has now put a fly on the end of the line, so they're gonna see if they can catch something. Steve and I have just been chatting about 
um, Chalk Springs Fisheries. It's part of the Arundel Estate, the lands owned by the Arundel Estate. It used to actually be watercress beds, but it is now a fishery here. And Gussie's got a shield bug. Look at that. We just had fun fishing. We've worked out that Gus can cast with both hands, his left and his right. He's ambidextrous, which um, apparently is very handy when you're fishing. It means you can get into all the spots. But we've had a really good session with Steve. And now we are heading into Arundel for a little wander around. <laughs> Well, we had a slight change of plan. It's raining, it's a little bit miserable, so I thought we wouldn't um, show you Arundel today. I'm gonna to save that for another time, but Gussie and I did a drive through. <laughs> Gussie filmed little bits for me, so I'll share that with you. Um, and Simon called and said, do you want to have lunch at the Fittleworth stores? And we said, yes, why not? So Fittleworth stores is quite near Simon's office. It is behind me. And it is the best place ever. I was in there last week and I said to them, this really is the best place ever. I needed to get euros for Coco to go on her French trip. I got them in there. They've got a post office. They have a cafe. They have a playground. They have, I think it's a, is it a football pitch, Gussie? Yeah. They've got a football pitch. They've got like a kind of workout yeah. area with like different things that the children low ropes. and adults can go on those. Like some low ropes things. Low ropes that you can climb on all sorts. They've got the most wonderful shops, so you can get, you, you could probably do your weekly shop. I sell my granola in there. They've got, um, you know, butchers so you can get good meat. They do some frozen meals. They have all sorts and we just love it. So we are going to go into the calf. I actually know what I'm going to have. I'm going to have a cheese and ham toasted sandwich, which is my favourite thing, particularly on a bit of a wet, miserable, gloomy September day. Anyway, Gus, do you know what you're going to have? Yeah. What are you gonna have? Pepperoni pizza. Pepperoni pizza. That's what Gus is gonna have. They do homemade pizzas. Anyway, we're gonna go meet Sai and enjoy having a lunch with him. So this is the Fittleworth stores. Oh look, I've just spotted apples. I need some of those. Um, let me take you inside. So they have a gift section, fruit and veg. And I'll take them there in a minute. Bread, crisps, all sorts of things. I know. Um, frozen meals in here, and then they've got the fridge, fridge section, and then all of oh, you're walking into things. Um, they have got you know, biscuits and things, and then the post office over there. We even have local English wine, which is one of my favourites, um, up on the shelf there. Stockham wine is exceptionally good. And then through here, they have got the cafe area. And here is my cheese and ham toasty. We just love this place. We had a lovely lunch with Simon and then I came back here and was feeling quite tired. Actually, I had a little bit of sleep, took the dogs for a walk and then we've got some gorgeous B&Bs staying. Um, well, actually, he's gone fishing and she um, came over for a cup of tea and a chat. So that has been lovely. Now, I'm just going to prepare these and share with you what I'm doing. Now you want to get rid of as much stalk as possible, but I'm not going to take all the berries off individually. A lot of recipes say that you need to do this, but actually you don't, you don't at all. When you boil them, the um, toxic element of the stalks comes out and so they're no longer harmful. So I'm taking off as much as I possibly can but if I was to take every single berry off these stalks, I would be here for hours. So I'm just doing a quick cheat with you now. 
and I thought I'd chat to you at the same time. So I talked quickly this morning about Coco going on the French trip. She was quite apprehensive. Um, I think I've shared with you before that she gets, you know, quite nervous about new things. But um, she's been working with um, Kate Finn, the hypnotherapist. And yesterday when she was getting a little bit of a spin, I said, darling, why don't you go upstairs? Sorry, Lola's being noisy. Why don't you go upstairs and lie on your bed and listen to Kate? And Kate's got the most relaxing, soothing voice. And she came down about an hour and a half later and she said, Mommy, that really helped. And so last night she listened to Kate as well as she went to sleep and she's allowed to listen to her as well on the trip. And I think, you know, sometimes there's no point having battles with children. You know, they have their anxieties and it's best that, sorry, I've got an itchy eye. It's best that, you know, you're kind and compassionate and give them the tools to help them cope with it. Um, and Coco went off quite happily this morning, which is excellent. And I know that she'll have a wonderful, wonderful time. Now, any green berries I am going to take off because they are not ripe and they're not ready. And we don't want these, but we're gonna boil them and we're gonna sieve them. So. Don't worry if you don't get them all off, but as many as you possibly, possibly can. There's quite a lot of green on there. In fact, there's more green than anything else. So I'm just going to cut the black ones off. So this is for our um, elderberry syrup. It was such a lovely time with Gussie this morning and really nice to do something just him and I, which I think is really important if you've got a few children, to try and do things with them individually. I mean, obviously Coco and I do the ponies and we have that time together, but it's really lovely to have some time with Gus and um, enjoy his company. <coughs> He's currently having some time on his <coughs> iPad and that is Florence being noisy. There are a few green ones in here. I'm going to pick those out in a moment. Um, but this in itself is going to take a little while. Um, but the syrup doesn't take any time at all. It's just the preparation. And you can also quite easily just pull the ripe berries off to get as rid of as much of the stalk as possible, just through your hands, which is another way of doing it. You can put the berries into the freezer, and so they're frozen, and then you can use a fork just to pull them off the stalks. Um, you know, whichever method you find easiest but you want to try and get rid of as much stalk as you possibly can but remember you will boil this um, so any little bits of stalk in there the toxicity will be taken out through the boiling process um, and it does elderberry does stain so be mindful of that too. I've got a little bit of, on my shirt from earlier from picking them, but I shall put that into soak later on. And then doing it over the bowl, you get rid of um, the stalks, but you're also any juice is going into here as well, which is important. That is the bit that we want to keep. The goodness in these berries is incredible. Packed full of vitamins. Vitamin A, vitamin C, apparently elderberries have more vitamin C in them than oranges. So they really are really good for you and so good at boosting your immune system as we're going into winter 
really good if you've got a cold or flu um, to help you get over that and give your immune system a good boost. Um, will help you recover quicker. And I've also washed them. So I've got rid of any <laughs> creepy crawlers. I've got a mountain of stalks and I've gone through and I've got as many stalks off as I possibly can. I have covered it with water and now I'm just going to bring this to the boil and boil it for um, a good sort of 20 minutes or so and also use, where is it, my masher just to encourage as much juice out as possible and then we'll strain it. And I'm also going to leave the lid off because I want um, it to evaporate and reduce as well. So it's a lid off boil. And I'm going to chuck this all on the compost. So it is boiling away nicely. I don't know if you can see. I've <laughs> just steamed my face. But I'm just going to leave that to bubble. Let um, the juices come out. Give it a little bit of a mash. And I have got quite a lot of liquid in there, so I might actually let it um, boil for a little bit longer. And also when you're mashing, you can um, fish out any extra stalks you have got going on. Anyway, I am going to get my jelly bags prepped and ready to strain this lot. Lola, are you helping me? Are you helping me? I'm so lovely. And not jumping up quite so much, are you? No, we don't like dogs that jump up. And Florence wants to get involved too. Look at this little one. So, so squidgy. She's keeping her company. You are so lovely. When I went and had a little sleep earlier, I closed my bedroom door because I really didn't want to sleep with Florence. And she was sleeping on the step outside my bedroom. She's such a mummy's girl. So sweet. Anyway, I have just seen while I'm chatting to you that um, Archer sent a message. So I am going to get my jelly bags ready and see. Um, I think he said that he has got prep now and he will chat to us later. But um, he had his first proper day of school today and he is getting on really well. So they did an expedition. Um, he had two nights up, up a mountain climbed a few Munros and um, I think it was pretty windy and pretty wild. He said the outer layer of his tent blew off but he didn't seem disheartened and we've had a very very happy photo from him. Um, so he is he's good, he is loving it. He said, he actually said, no offence mum but I am loving, loving boarding school which is amazing and I knew that he was the sort of boy that was ready for it and would love it. I know that Coco is the sort of girl that wouldn't, and it's horses for courses, but um, he is very happy. And somebody said to me actually the other day that um, the first time, you know, to begin with, she just put her blinkers on the first time hers went off and kind of flew the nest. And for the first week, she had to put her blinkers on. And very much last week, I felt I had to have my blinkers on. I didn't chat to any girlfriends because I knew that I would get really upset and emotional talking to them. And I just, um, I kept in. I didn't want the children to see, like Coco and Gus, to see me really upset. Um, and I didn't want Arch to be aware of it. But now, a week on, I am feeling much happier about it. Still a little bit emotional. Not quite so sick, which like sick in here. I don't know if you understand what I mean by that. It's a bit of an odd analogy, but um, anyway, 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 Simon is home. So I'm going to chat to him, let that do its thing and talk to you a bit later. Right, this has been simmering, well, boiling and then simmering away. So I'm just going to strain it. I'm using my jelly bags for this. I'm just going to spoon it in and then let it drip overnight. I've got two bags so I don't want to over overfill them. 
colour is amazing. <laughs> the dogs are playing by my feet. That's Lola and Florence. Girls, what are you doing? And then tomorrow we will make the syrup. Now, our B&B guest has just got back from his days fishing and he has bought over two trout. So I thought rather than showing you how to um, gut trout in this week's video, I would do a separate how to gut a trout and cook it video. So that I'm going to do now, but I'm going to do it as a separate thing because some of you may or may not be interested and I thought I would just do it as a separate. But the reason why I started Ask Charlie is because of gutting and preparing fish. So if you want to hear that story, head over and watch the trout tutorial um, when it goes up. I don't know exactly when it will go up, but at some point. So keep your eyes peeled for that if you are interested. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I am just getting ready for the day and I thought I would share these with you. I'm feeling a little bit tired actually as well because it was really stormy here in West Sussex last night and we had a terrible night's sleep which is not ideal and that's why I've definitely needed some help with um, skincare products at the moment. So this is the L'Occitane Overnight Reset Serum. It's amazing. So I put this on and then pot around, do my things. And then just last thing before I get into bed, I put this beautiful, rich moisturiser on. It's gorgeous. It smells really amazing. It smells, I know this is going to sound a bit silly, but it smells kind of autumn-y. Like it doesn't smell like sweet like summer. It's just got a really beautiful um, fragrance to it. So that just before I go to bed. And it's really important that you don't put your products on too close together. You need time for your skin to absorb it before you put on another product if you're using a variety of things. And then in the morning, I am using this emulsion, which is not oily. It's like a sort of milky texture. It absorbs into the skin beautifully and it's a perfect base for your makeup. I have put that on. And again, it smells really gorgeous. Um, this has got marjoram in, which is really good for reawakening your skin. They've also got hyaluronic acid. So it's really good for moisture, for texture, for plumpness. And I think going through the seasons from summer into autumn, our skin needs some TLC as well. Um, you know, mine from such a hot, dry summer, the humidity that we had in Turkey, my skin has really been put through its paces, so I can highly recommend those. And I also have a 10% discount code for you, which is Charlie10, and um, you will get 10% off at checkout. And these products are really, really beautiful. And I think our skin does need, um, you know, looking after as we go into autumn. So that's something that I have been doing. And I've also, I don't think I've shared these with you, and um, these are Hair Burst Chewable Vitamins. I've been using those, and um, I'm hoping, I just don't have the best hair in the world, but we can try anything, can't we? So I have been taking those actually now for, well in fact, since January. I really like to try things out and put them through their paces before I recommend them to you. I won't just use something once and recommend it. I like to <laughs> test and trial things. And these have really been put through their paces. They came up to Scotland with me and um, my skin has definitely thanked me for giving it some more moisture and rehydrating it um, after a long, hot summer. Anyway, I'm gonna put my makeup on and then I need to go downstairs and do the elderberries that have been straining overnight. I've got a and b changeover to do today. I've got all sorts. I've also realized that Gus has an extra day off. It is the boarders that go to his school that go back um, tomorrow. So he has got an extra day um, with me, which is really lovely. Anyway, I'm gonna stop waffling, put my makeup on and crack on with the day. I'm ready for the day. These have been um, straining overnight, so these can go on the compost. So I'm just gonna put them over in the sink. And then I'm going to pour 
this into my pan, getting out as much goodness as I can. In fact, I'm going to grab a spatula and just get all of that out. You want all the goodness that you can get. And then the same with this bowl. Now you can use dried elderberries. The best time to forage for them is August, September. They're a little bit earlier this year than normal. So um, if you can't get the fresh ones, you can use dried. Now you can use sugar, but actually I'm going to use raw honey. This is given to me by a friend to sweeten it. And so I'm just gonna pop a few tablespoons, um, probably three in here. I'm not gonna boil this, I'm just gonna heat it through gently so the honey melts. So I don't want any of the goodness of the honey to be boiled away. I'm gonna add in a handful of cloves, like that about a teaspoon of ground ginger. You can use fresh, but I've actually run out of fresh. Shake of ginger. And a cinnamon stick. I'm gonna add a whole cinnamon stick into there. And then I've just sliced up three oranges. I don't want to splash, <laughs> pop those in as well. And I'm just going to put this on a gentle heat to simmer away. Probably for about 20 minutes or so, you just want all of those um, flavours to infuse. You want the honey to melt, you want the cloves and cinnamon just to really infuse that and then you will strain it again. I have left this simmering gently actually got slightly distracted on the phone um, but it is done and smelling amazing so I'm just going to pour this I've got a sieve over a bowl and I'm going to just strain it again I don't need to leave it overnight it's fine I just don't want the cinnamon sticks or cloves in here. I'm going to leave this co to completely cool and then we will bottle it. Now, um, storing it. Because there's not loads and loads of sugar in it, you can't um, jar it like you would jar um, jam and things like that. You can keep it in the fridge for a couple of weeks and it's absolutely fine, or you can freeze it. So I'm actually going to put some into a bottle to go into the fridge, and then I'm going to put some, when it's totally cooled, into ice cube trays, and then I can just defrost an ice cube at a time, because it's quite potent. You don't need lots of it, but that's a really good way of storing it over the winter. And then you can just have, you know, an ice cube at a time, you can have that, you know, warm with like a tea. You could, um, you know, defrost it and have it um, with your breakfast. You could put it into a smoothie. There's all sorts of different ways of taking it and enjoying it. And I'm just gonna let this drip out a little bit more. I think it's sitting, it's sitting on the top. It's just sitting on the top. So I'm gonna let that just drip into there. Leave that to totally cool and then I have got a bottle here that I'm going to put some in to go into the fridge and then I've got some ice cube trays over here which I need to get out. So I'm going to use these. I've just been having um, an interesting discussion with, um, well, with various people, with Blake and Bull and with Olga themselves and with a company called Smart Range. I'm sure it's Smart Range lovely chap, Glenn at Smart Range, about my Arga. Now, many of you will be able to relate to this because you're probably having similar conversations. Well, I know that some of you are because you have messaged. 
about what we are going to do with the cost of electricity going through the roof. And actually now there's a change in government, whether that changes, who knows, time will tell, but Argus are expensive to run and they are going to probably be, and it's a probably at the moment because we don't know exactly what's happening. Um, Liz Truss has just become prime minister, literally as, as I'm filming this. So, you know, we need to look into options of making this cheaper to run and I am doing that. So bear with me. There are options. Of course, it's an outlay to start with. But um, I think there are big savings and so I am doing my research and I will keep you posted on this subject. And actually, while I'm chatting to you, I just wanted to say the most enormous, enormous thank you. I have had so many lovely messages, so much lovely support about Arch going off to school, so much kindness. It's incredible. The lovely lady that and her husband that had been staying in the B&B was so kind. They gave me a really lovely candle and soap, which was really gorgeous. And we had a lovely, lovely time chatting yesterday. And then I've had this in the post, um, which is a packet of sweet pea seeds, which a lovely lady has, um, has sent me. A gorgeous card and some seeds from her garden. So I am going to grow these for next year. And it's just so kind and so thoughtful. And I just wanted to say an enormous thank you. I really, really do appreciate your lovely comments and messages. And I do try to reply to all of you. I'm sorry, sometimes I'm a bit slow on replying. <laughs> you just have to bear with me. I'm juggling quite a few balls often. Um, but a huge thank you. It does mean the absolute world to me. Anyway, I'm going to let this cool. I need to get um, lunch sorted for Gussie and I still haven't done the B&B room, so I need to crack on and get, get going somewhat. I have just um, been WhatsApping Archie. He sent me a message to say that he's got a rugby match on um, Saturday. Technically, he's supposed to not be playing any contact sport because of his thumb for another week or so but he seems quite excited about it so I'm not going to say you can't but I have got this <clears throat> that I found in his bedroom which I'm going to post up and thumb support he's got one but actually this might be better for rugby so I'm sending that I we couldn't find his swimming goggles so I've got him another pair of swimming goggles which I need to put a name tape on and then um, Coco and Gussie chose some treats for him. So there's some sweets, some pot noodles. I have got him some um, protein bars because I know that he's going to the gym. And he also loves these chilli and lime nuts. So I've got him a few packets of those. So I'm going to put a name tape on this and package this little lot up and put it in the post today for him for a little little box of goodies which i think he will really appreciate i know that i really appreciate getting lovely things in the post um particularly when i was at school mum always sent letters and postcards and things which was really lovely so um i'm going to get this box in the post to him this afternoon as well so archie's box is all packaged up for me to take to the post office in a mo, and I'm just going to do this. So I have sterilized my bottle. I have poured my elderberry mix into a jug just to make it much easier for pouring. So this is going to go into the fridge and then I have got my ice cube tray here and I'm just going to pour this in and then when these are frozen I can decant them into a little Tupperware something like that so they're just easy to access full of goodness for us boost our immune system going in to the colder months so I'm going to put that in the fridge that in the freezer. 
I'm going to go to the post office with Gussie now and get Archer's box posted to him. I want to get today's post. I am going to leave this vlog here. I'm sending you lots of love. I will see you next week. And yes, thank you so much for watching. Thank you again for your love and your kindness. It absolutely means the world to me. And I will see you again next week.